What's up guys and welcome back to Let's Talk. And in honor of Star Wars Day, May the 4th, I wanted to do a video on my complete Star Wars media collection slash some collectibles that I have around the game room. So, may the 4th be with you. Alright, so in no specific release order or something like that, I'm going to try to go from oldest to newest. So we will start with my Super Nintendo games. So starting with Super Star Wars on the Super Nintendo system. This is a side-scroller, uh, jump around and hack and slash type game. And that game was followed up by Super Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. And obviously for the third game we have Super Return of the Jedi. So I've actually, ne I've only really played the original Super Star Wars, and they were pretty fun games, but as a collector, I just had to have them all. So next, jumping out of order, just because I wanted to get the Nintendo stuff out of the way, from Limited Run Games, they released Star Wars on the NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, and the Star Wars Empire Strikes Back on the NES Entertainment System. And they put them in the, basically like the, the, the back cardboards that you would get with the, like the Kenner action figures. So they look kind of similar to that. So that was the idea with these. And you can actually open up the back, play the game, and put it back in for display purposes. And I have them on my shelf and that's why they're kind of bent like that. And then also from Limited Run, I have the Shadows of the Empire from the Nintendo 64. Now they went with the, the purple cart along with the, the red and the blue like the other ones. And I already had the game on Nintendo 64, but just having it with the, the cool card background and just, I was a big fan of this game as a kid, so it was a no-brainer for me to pick that up from Limited Run. Speaking of Nintendo 64, we have Star Wars Rogue Squadron. This is one of the best Star Wars uh, flying games there ever was, and people still talk about this game today. More along, more of the, the GameCube version, we'll get to that later, but this is where it started. And speaking of Shadows of the Empire, here we go. Shadows of the Empire, Nintendo 64. I played the hell out of this game as a kid. I, played, I downloaded it on Steam, I played it on my PC. This was such a fun game. It was, it's an original story, it, you're not playing Luke, you're not playing Han, um, it was just such a fun game that the beginning Hoth battle where you get the drive, drive the snow speeders and go around the, the AT, uh, AT ATs. oh my god, it's so fun, I love this game. And then the speeder bike level at the end, this was a great game. Then we have Star Wars Episode One: Battle for Naboo on the Nintendo 64. Uh, I've actually never played this one, but again, as a collector, have it in my collection. And then, how could we not talk about Star Wars Episode One: Racer? This was a very, this was a packing game, I believe, for the Nintendo 64 at one point. And this is just a fantastic game. They actually just remade it for the PS4 and the Xbox One, and I believe it's on PC as well. So I think we'll get to that later in my pile. Now rewinding back a little bit, we have Star Wars Arcade for the 32X. Um, I was a Sega kid as a child, but I actually never had the 32X. I remember renting 32X games on accident and getting them home and them not fitting in my Sega and being pretty upset about it. But I just had to have the Star Wars game because it was complete in box and I like to put it on my shelf. I think it looks cool. One day I will get a 32X and I'll try it out. Jump back to the Nintendo 64. I actually do have the box for Rogue Squadron. I just keep it out of the box so if I want to play it I don't have to disturb the cardboard. Around the time of the Nintendo uh, Game Boy and the Game Boy Color there was a lot of third party and clones or imitation consoles and this was by Game Wizard. Now this is a Star Wars only thing and it came with its own proprietary cartridges. So there was an X-Wing attack, there was Darth Vader's Revenge, and Princess Leia's Rescue. And I did play these quite a bit. I mean, they were very simple. 
if you, I mean, you can't really see it on the camera, but you can kind of see what the level looked like, and you just jumped around as a black little stick figure and jumped around the level. The, the X-Wing one, you flew around on a little plane, so it was nothing like the Game Boy was, but it was pretty cool to have, and I had this as a kid, and I still have it in my collection, so I, uh, it's got some sentimental value, and hey, it's Star Wars, so that's what we're talking about. Around the N64 time, we had the PlayStation 1, and there was a slew of PlayStation 1 Star Wars games. I didn't, I don't have them all in my collection, but the ones I do have are the Star Wars, this, this is a hard title to say, Star Wars Masters of Terra Kasi, I believe is the way to pronounce it. Now this was like a Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter type game, it was a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with the Star Wars paint job with the Star Wars, uh, Star Wars characters in it. And the, I remember Luke Skywalker in the, the, uh, the all-black gi he would wear the, with the green lightsaber, so it was Jedi Luke. He was like the hardest one in the game, and that was the final boss, and he was hard as hell to beat. I just still don't think I've ever beaten him. Next, we have Star Wars Dark Forces. This is a first-person shooter, kind of like a Doom it was like a Doom Quake-like game, and it has a Star Wars paint job on it, so hey, it was a great game. Another one people don't talk about enough, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Now this was kind of a movie tie-in game, and I actually think this game was fantastic. I also haven't played it in many, many years, but from what I remember, I really enjoyed this game. And probably one of the best Star Wars games on the PlayStation was Star Wars Jedi Power Battles. I do hear people talk about this game a lot, and for good reason. The game was tough, but this has one of the best lightsaber-like physics and lightsaber fighting in a Star Wars video game to this date. Alright, so after the PlayStation era, uh, right around the tail end of the PlayStation, maybe in the beginning of the PS2, we had Dreamcast. So again, I have Jedi Power Battles on the Dreamcast, because I believe the Dreamcast was a bit more powerful than the PlayStation, and I think this is the superior console to play Jedi Power Battles on. Here we have a Twisted Metal and Vigilante 8-like game, car combat, with Star Wars vehicles in a Star Wars universe, called Star Wars Demolition. Uh, I did not play this one as a kid. I picked this up later once I started collecting and I did play it for a little while. It's very bland, but again, at the time, it probably would have been okay. And back to Star Wars Episode One Racer. I think the Dreamcast is also the superior platform to be playing this game. Although the N64 version wasn't bad, I think this is the best version to play. Just because the graphics are definitely a little bit better than the N64. Alright, now we're moving to a new generation. We got the Nintendo GameCube. So, the GameCube was the era where the first LEGO Star Wars came out. And this game was fantastic. Obviously, because we have had how many LEGO Star Wars by now? LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga is incredible. And we wouldn't have that game if it wasn't for this and how well this did. Then we have Star Wars Bounty Hunter. I actually never played this game as a child. Uh, it looks really good, and I really wish we got that Star Wars 13 game that was supposed to be uh, a Bounty Hunter game, and it probably would have been basically a spiritual successor to this. And this game looks fantastic. Limited Run did put this out on the PlayStation 4, and I believe I have it in this pile. So we'll get back to this. And we can't talk about Star Wars GameCube games without talking Rogue Squadron, Rebel Strike, and Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron th uh, 2. Now, these games still hold up today. If you have the HDMI adapter for your GameCube, these games still look good. And they play terrific. They are fantastic games and a must-have for any Star Wars fan and any GameCube collector. Just to jump ahead to the Nintendo Switch, I have Star Wars Pinball. Now, I think this is a pretty cool game just to have on the go, you know, a little turn your mind off, play a little pinball, and it's got all Star Wars tables on it. 
So it was pretty cool. I picked it up for a few dollars and I'm glad to have it in my Nintendo Switch collection. All right, moving on to the PlayStation 2. We have Star Wars Starfighter. Now, I did play this game as a child and it was pretty good. I mean, it's, it's not Rogue Squadron, but it was still a pretty good game. And I think it was around the time of the episode one, so that's why you got the, uh, forget the name of that ship, but the one Anakin blows up the, the shield generator with, and then Mandalorian actually now has it. I think it's a Nar Naboo Starfighter, actually, maybe, would be the correct term. But this was a great PS2 game. Now, one more on the PS2 that I have in my collection is Star Wars Racer Revenge. This was a sequel to Episode One Racer, and it wasn't as good. Um, I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe people were just a little burnt out, but it wasn't as great, but still not a bad Star Wars game. Moving on to the Xbox. Now we have Star Wars Starfighter again, but this is the special edition. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is any different than the PS2 version. Um, just looking at the back, they look pretty similar. But I remember at the time, Xbox, specifically the Tony Hawk game, I think X2 it was called, there was some differences between the consoles. So I'm not entirely sure, but there could be a difference between this and the PS2 Starfighter. If there is... Let me know down in the comments, because I'd be interested to know. Next up, we have Star Wars Obi-Wan. Now, I also didn't play this one as a child. I don't know why this one slipped by me, but this looks like my type of game, and I really would love to play this, but it's kind of hard, because these graphics don't look great, and I don't know if I'd be able to sit through it and go back, but I'm kind of upset I missed this game, because I hear people talk about this, and some people love it, and some people hate it. Anyway, it's in my collection, glad to have it. Next up, we have the original Star Wars Battlefront. Now, this game was amazing. It had Xbox Live. Now, this is one of the first games, well, first Star Wars games to have Xbox Live. And this was so fun to verse people all over the world as stormtroopers or whatever you wanted to play as. It was amazing. It was so fun and if you didn't have Xbox Live you can always just first the computer and it was a great time to play. Next up we have Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. Now this looks like a movie tie-in game. I never played this one. Um, it looks okay. You know this is probably another Obi-Wan type game where the graphics won't really hold up to today's standards but it looks like a movie tie-in game. I've never played it but it looks pretty good. The movie was pretty good, so I imagine it being made by LucasArts, it probably wasn't terrible. It just slipped by me, but I'm glad to have it in my collection. Next up we have Star Wars Republic Commando. Now this game is fantastic. It still holds up today. It's a first person shooter, and it's got an original story. You are a clone trooper, and you go through this original story, and it's a great time. It's actually on sale right now on Steam, and that's probably the best way to play it if you got a good PC. But Limited Run also did put this out on the PlayStation 4, and I think it's backwards compatible on the Series X as well. So if you have the disc, and you might even be able to buy it on the Xbox Marketplace, but definitely check this one out. And we can't talk Star Wars games without talking KOTOR, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now this was a Star Wars RPG. And again, it missed me for some reason. I wasn't into RPGs at the time, but people still high, hold this game in such high regard. And there is a remake coming out, and I cannot wait for that because I missed out. I missed the boat on these, and I'm really upset about that. I'm glad to have it in my collection, but I really wish I had some memories with this game because I never got to play it. But people hold it in such high regard. It's a platinum hit. They're making a remake, and people are ecstatic about that so glad to have it in my collection but I wish I got to play it because Bioware they make some good RPGs well at least they used to. to the Nintendo Wii never played this game Star Wars the Clone Wars again that just has a collector I pick up some games it said Star Wars had to have it so I guess you swing the the Wii controller around like a like a lightsaber I didn't really watch the Star Wars um, Clone Wars cartoons 
so I wouldn't really get too much out of this. But this is set in the Attack of the Clones era, around where the cartoon was. Next up, moving on to the Xbox 360. My favorite console of all time. Although there was a dark time for the 360, and that's when they were really pushing the Kinect. Uh, again, I didn't play this game. It came with a Kinect bundle that I bought for some reason back in the day. But I have this game. Never played it, but I guess... If I was to try Kinect, this would probably be the game I'd play, but never played it. Now, let's talk about Star Wars The Force Unleashed. This game is absolutely incredible. I have the special edition steel books here, and I love these games. At first I didn't like it, and then I replayed them, and they're fantastic. You play as Darth Vader's apprentice, and you can become good or bad. So later on you can turn on Vader or I, I don't remember exactly but it's I just remember loving these games and they're fantastic and just this this is probably after Jedi power battles this was the next greatest Star Wars game in my opinion because the lightsaber fighting and the using the force and jumping around it was a fantastic game now there was Force Unleashed 2 this is again the steelbook version um, not as great as the first one, as I, if I can recall right. Um, wasn't bad, but I remember enjoying the first one more. Maybe it was just the point in time where I played it, because I get in some times where I don't want to play, and maybe it wasn't as great. Moving on to the PlayStation 4. We have Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, this one is unopened because I actually got it on the Xbox One at the time. I received this as a gift, but as a collector, I, uh, I wanted to hang on to it. Again, on the PlayStation 4, we have Star Wars Racer Revenge. Now, I have a physical version of this game because I got it through Limited Run Games. You can't really see it there, but this was one of the games that they put out in their big Star Wars um, physical campaign they had going on and had to have it in the collection because Limited Run makes some nice stuff. Speaking of Limited Run, we have Episode 1 Racer. This is where it all began. This is the This is the sequel. This is the original. Again, it's not open. I usually don't open my Limited Run stuff unless I really want to play it. Um, and I think I have this downloaded on my Xbox. If Limited Run made Xbox games, which I hear they're going to start doing, then I would be buying all Xbox stuff, but PlayStation would be my next go-to after the Xbox. But I'll buy it digitally on the Xbox, and then I'll get the physical on PlayStation. Again, Limited Run, we have Star Wars Republic Commando. I talked about this earlier on the original Xbox, but had to have the new physical version with the updated remastered graphics on the PlayStation 4. Another limited run game on the PlayStation 4. You'll, you'll see a pattern here. I bought all the limited run PlayStation games and I didn't open any of them. But this is Bounty Hunter. So, also had to have this one in the collection. Last but not least, we have the Star Wars Jedi... What is it? Jedi, Jedi Knight Outcast and Jedi Knight Academy. Now, I didn't play these games as a child, but when Limited Run put them out for the PS4 and this double pack, I had to have them. Just because I got all the other ones from Limited Run, so why not have this one to complete the collection? Moving on to the Xbox One. Now, remember I said I had Battlefront, so I have the Special Edition, and I actually played the hell out of this game. It played kind of like Call of Duty, and the guys from work at the time, I was playing with them every single night. And we really liked this game. This was really good until the microtransactions came down the road with part two. But the first game was fantastic. There was no story mode, it was strictly multiplayer, and it just works with this game. Because the first Battlefront was fantastic on the original Xbox and PS2 and Battlefront 2. So this was the spiritual successor reboot, and they did a great job with this. Now, Battlefront 2 Deluxe Edition, because the first one was great and then they were putting a story mode into this, I said, oh my god, this has to be amazing. Well, we all know the story would happen with this. Uh, it's, it's a good game now, 
And the story is not so great. It, it's eh, meh. But now with the microtransactions and all that stuff to a minimum and some content in the game, I think it's worth picking up for the few dollars it is. And I think it might even be on Game Pass, so check it out. Then we have Jedi Fallen Order Deluxe Edition. This game was incredible. This is kind of like a Souls-like, um, Uncharted type deal. You know, put them both together, put a Star Wars paint job on it, you got Jedi Fallen Order. It, this game was hard, so that's the Souls-like, but the Adventure-like is the Uncharted part. And put the Star Wars paint job on it, you, you build in lightsabers, you're leveling up your abilities, unlocking new abilities. Fantastic game. Must play for any Star Wars fan, and it's on Game Pass, so check it out. And last but not least, we have Star Wars Squadrons. Now this was basically a reboot of the Squadron series. I played it for a little while, but I'm not huge on the Starfighter games like that. So the flying games is just okay to me, but I thought the Star Wars paint job on it would really suck me in. I played it for a little while, but kind of lost interest. But, again, it's not a terrible game, and I think the PlayStation 4 version has VR, which would be pretty cool to play this game in, but I get sick as a dog with VR, so unfortunately I can't check that out, but definitely a great game. Alright, so those are all the games I have, but without the movies, we wouldn't have any of these games. So, let's talk Star Wars movies, and I'm going to start from oldest to newest in my collection. So, unfortunately, I don't have the original VHS set, but I do have the remastered VHS set, and I haven't opened this in a long time. I remember it would make a, uh, maybe it's a little old, but it would make like that whoop, 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 sound when you would put this on. It would make like that squeaky sound. That was always pretty funny. But we have Star Wars Special Edition. See, this is before they even called it A New Hope. So this is before it was Episode 4. Then we have Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. And these are all in great shape, so I'm really glad I still have these in my collection. And then, last but not least, Return of the Jedi. Now, as a kid, this one was my favorite. But as I grow older, I think it, I would put it in third place. I think I would say Empire, New Hope and then Return of the Jedi. But that's the VHS set. Next up we have the first Blu-ray release of Star Wars, um, the complete saga at the time. This was episode one, two, three, four, five, six. So this had episode one, episode two, episode three, four, five, and six, obviously. But this was the first Blu-ray release. There was a set where you can get them all together, but I kind of liked having the separate slip covers, and I think it was cheaper at the time to buy them separately. So now moving on to 4Ks. Obviously, we have Star Wars Episode 1 on 4K. Next, we have Star Wars Episode 2 on 4K. And I think you guys have already seen some of these in our Star Wars reviews. Next, we have Star Wars Episode 3 on 4K. And I'm going in chronological order here, so the next one would be Solo, a Star Wars story on 4K. And I have the Steelbook version here from Best Buy. And up next after that we have a Star Wars story, Rogue One. Now this is an amazing movie. And this leads right into the events of Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. So this is a must see if you haven't seen it yet. Next up we have Star Wars, A New Hope. This one might this one's creeping up on my number one favorite for some reason. I, I, every time I watch this movie, I love it more and more. And I'm really glad to have it on 4K. And now my all-time favorite Star Wars movie, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Glad to have this on 4K. Next up is Star Wars Return of the Jedi on 4K. Now we move into the Disney era of the Star Wars movies with The Force Awakens on 4K. Now we have Episode 8, The Last Jedi. This is the Best Buy Steelbook version. Three discs, bonus features, all that. Very nice steelbook. Not that great of a movie. And last but not least, we have Rise of Skywalker. This is the Best Buy Steelbook again. 
Um, I don't hate this movie, but I don't love it. I love the amount of fan service. I think JJ did a great job with what he had. Um, you know, I, I've only seen it twice, so we're in the middle of a Star Wars watch through and review for the channel. So I'm pretty excited to get back to this because I, I want to see if I like it still. Because I don't remember hating it, but I don't remember loving it. Now we have a Star Wars Story Rogue One on Blu-ray. I did upgrade to the 4K, so that's why I still have my Blu-ray. And speaking of upgrades, this is the Best Buy Steelbook of The Force Awakens. Um, I really like this, this Steelbook. I don't think it's my favorite Star Wars movie, but I upgraded to the 4K anyway just because I wanted the whole set. And now, I, like I mentioned earlier, I really tried with these. I, I tried so hard, and people praise them all the time, and I just can't get into it. But I have The Clone Wars. This is the original movie, and then I believe the show started after the movie, and this is the complete season one of The Clone Wars, which, again, I get about halfway through the movie, and I watch one or two episodes of this, and it's just... I don't know if it's the art style... I don't know if it's too kiddy, but for some reason I, I just I can't get into these and I really wish I could because I know I'm missing a lot of stuff. And last but not least, especially not least, not so much a Star, I mean it is Star Wars, but this is the Family Guy trilogy. Now this is that Blue Harvest, I forget the actual names, so it was St Family Guy presents Blue Harvest, Family Guy something 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 Dark Side, and Family Guy It's a Trap. So this is the original trilogy, um, and Family Guy parried, par uh, parodied it. Now, the first one is a Blue Harvest, and that is Episode 4, A New Hope. And this, this is hysterical. I just watched these the other night with my girlfriend, and we had a great time. We were laughing. We were, oh my god, I, I was wheezing some parts of this. It, it's so hysterical. The next in line, obviously, would be The Empire Strikes Back, and that's something, something, something dark side. And, again, like the first one, they nailed it. It's hysterical. I love these. I'm so glad I have these on Blu-ray because I think these are actually starting to get a little expensive this set. And last but not least, it's a trap. I haven't watched this one yet, but I've, I've watched the other two last night. I'm probably going to watch this one tonight, but fantastic from what I remember. And this is Return of the Jedi. So that's my entire Star Wars media collection. Uh, as you can see behind me, I have some Star Wars Kenner figures and some of the Black Series stuff that came out. I have a Star Wars Xbox 360 um, with the C-3PO edition. And I'm just a huge Star Wars fan. I love Star Wars. I would like to complete my collection and own them all one day just to say I have every Star Wars game in existence. But I know some of them are starting to get a little expensive and hard to find. But maybe one day eventually I'll have them all. But if you like this video, consider subscribing, liking, commenting. Let's talk down in the comments. How many of the Star Wars games have you played? Which one should I play? Do you have any that I don't have that I should know about? Let's talk down in the comments anything Star Wars, because today's Star Wars Day. It's a day to celebrate. So let's talk down in the comments. And thanks for watching if you made it this far. And have a great rest of your day. May the Force be with you. Wow.